Hello there. I'm very excited to be here. Well, my name is Helen Sang. Um, what a coincidence. Um, and I support the business and platform team in Messenger. In uh, April 2016, we've opened up the Messenger platform for developers to build. And since then, I've seen a number of pretty impressive experiences built on Messenger. Things like shop bots, trivia bots, news bots, even some of the meditation bots. So today, I'd like to actually show you some of the best practices on how some of the successful bots are built, and then deep dive into a couple of new features in uh, Messenger platform. But first, I'd like to thank all of you for being part of this growing community here. Since, um, since we started the platform, we've grown from zero to 100,000 developers in Messenger and with AI platform. And with 2,000, uh, sorry, 200,000 uh, monthly active bots. Um, and I'm also really excited to see that major platform providers are building on Messenger platform. These platform providers sim greatly simplify the life for marketers and entrepreneurs. And I'm seeing a great explosion of businesses building on top of them. Bots have changed my daily routine as well. I've used a Sephora bot to go and book my new makeover session, and um, I frequently use the Food Network bot to find my dinner recipes. And with the latest integration with Spotify, I can now send my favorite music to my friends all the time. All these use cases are available because of the feedback that we've got from the developer communities. So I want to thank you and also look at the amazing progress that we had in Messenger. So in less than short of two years, we have uh, shipped seven releases with major updates that uh, you've been asking for. And one of the most common questions I get when I ask people for feedback is, do you have any examples of what works well? So let me go over some of the uh, successful cases I've seen and best practices on them. First, let me talk a little bit about one of the most common questions about um, the eternal debate, conversations, or UI. Um, to me, it's a spectrum based on what you're trying to do. And in previous talk, you've heard a lot around really understanding what you're trying to do and what the use cases are. Um, chats can be very powerful and it's very intuitive, and everybody understands our messenger. But when you're trying to actually get people to type a lot, it's also very easy to make mistakes. Take a look at what I call death by decision tree here. This is an example of not what not to do. Um, taking many different inputs, asking a lot of questions before returning some kind of query results is usually pretty bad in a conversation flow. In this demo travel bot here, it's asking you tons of questions before returning you a bunch of results. Just think a little bit about what would happen if I type something wrong in the middle of this flow here. Game over. I'm likely going to rage quit rather than type in all of that again. In this case, when you're trying to actually get multiple inputs, it might be better to actually use the web view. And the Swelly bot has a great example of using this web view here. This bot is actually built in Austria, by the way. And it helps me to go and um, make really, life, really important life decisions, like which snack should I buy next? I can subscribe to uh, very funny questions around my friends, my followers, and also get notification about my silly questions. So let's take a look at how the Swelly bot uses the web view for its notification uh, options. It's fairly simple, actually. Just a list of chat boxes. The web view is customized to be halfway in height, and it just feels like a widget inside a conversation flow. Okay, what you notice the web uh, Swelly bot doesn't do is actually building a like whole website on top of this. So when you want to use the web view, say you want to actually show a list of options allowing people to browse things through, or allow them to actually do multi-select. You want to let people actually be able to change something in the midway while actually figuring out what they want to build. Um, or you want to integrate with something visual like a seating chart or a map. The bad use case of a web view is trying to actually build a whole web app on top of a conversation. So really think about this as a conversation flow. You really want to keep your interaction brief and very easy to understand. Another thing that I uh, really saw uh, as a best practices is um, structured navigations. 
when people get into the messenger experience, the first thing they are looking for is what can your bots actually do? Besides the welcome screen and you know, maybe a message to actually get the user started, the bot menu is a great feature that we shipped in uh, platform 2.0 in order for it to be a lot more prominent in our submenus uh, to tell people what kind of things your bot can do. And this is a good example to illustrate what the bot menu can do here. So the Maggie bot built by Nestle is used to um, raise awareness and also to drive um, its trial products. And if you can see from the screen here, the menu actually tells you things what your bots can do. For example, you can actually search for new recipes, you can set your user profiles, and at the same time also delete my data if necessary. What's really nice about the bot menu is that you can set, reset your flow at any time. So even if uh, in the middle of the flow you change something, you can always go back to this bot menu to restart something that you want to do. And this is really the power of our conversations here. Let me dig into uh, another feature that I'm very, very excited about, uh, which is called the chat extension. So when we actually first started on the platform, we opened the platform to developers by building bots in a one-to-one -one thread setting. So I'm a user, and I talk to a bot. But the power of Messenger is really the social context, which is why we built the chat extension to bring your bot to an existing conversation. Now, before I dig deeper about what, how you can actually implement this, let me clarify a few things about what, uh, the chat extension. So first of all, chat extensions don't listen to your message, and you don't actually do a mention at them. Instead, we are going all in with the web view, which allows you to build a very customized experience on top of existing conversations. Let me show you a video, if it works, about um, how we actually use the chat extension to build a, shipping, uh, a shopping list in a group conversation. So in this example here, uh, Renee is actually starting a shopping list. And uh, what she did is, is she clicks the plus, plus button and go to the drawer and click on the chat bot. And then she add a whole bunch of items that she wants to buy on the party, for the party. And when she's done, she clicks on send to conversation. What this does is it sends her list into a group conversation. Mikhail here say, I want to add something too. And then he basically cl click on the chat extension and add a few other things that he wants to buy, like ice cream. And when he's done, he clicks on the chat, again, send to conversations, and get this whole list updated into the group conversation. So think a little bit about what just happened here. You just built an experience that allows people to collaborate inside a group conversation. So far, what we've seen, chat extension that works pretty well, are those that are really social. So within a few clicks, it actually go and share the content of your bot back to the thread to allow people, to friends, actually to collaborate and actually play with. Remember, the chat extension is actually intended to augment the social experience. And so if you're thinking about building a chat extension, first think about what kind of experience would you want to actually um, do when you're actually talking to your friends. Let me talk a little bit about how to implement this. So implementing the chat extension requires three basic steps. The first step is to actually set your home URL using the, our API. By setting your home URL, we basically enable your chat extension capabilities in the drawer, as seen here. The drawer can be opened by the clicking on the plus button on the left-hand side. And what it does is it shows you first the bots that you have interacted with, either in the one-to-one -one setting or in the group setting. And after that, we also show you some of the bots that we recommend for you to actually try out. Clicking one of these bots will basically open up the chat extension with the URL that you have actually set on. The next step is to enable the Messenger SDK. By enabling the Messenger SDK, we provide you two different really important API for you to build on. The get context basically gives you context around the people who are in that conversation for you to actually build a very customized experience. And the second one is for you to actually sh uh, share your content back to the existing group threads. Sharing supports two different modes right now. 
One is the existing flow for shares in Messenger that allows you to go and send a content to a number of people that I want using a people picker. And the new one is around how to actually share this content back to the existing thread, just like what Renee actually did in sending her shopping list into an existing group thread. When the user sends and clicks shares, that message is going to be sending us the user who actually triggers that share flow. Okay? And uh, in the first version, we support a few content types right now. Images, GIFs, generic templates, and in addition, the open uh, graph content like music URL. In the generic template, we also support one single button. And so far, what we actually support is a URL so that you can actually open up a web view or a share flow. So if you want to actually create a way for people to actually like, create that viral interaction, you can also do that. One last thing about chat extension. Because this is a bot thing can now actually open up in a group conversation, people who actually interact with a chat extension might never have not actually uh, interacted with a bot before. So you might actually not have permissions to actually see the person's profile and actually get the right messaging access to message them later. So the chat extension also provides API for you to ask for these permissions if your bot actually wants to send messages to these people later on. So enough talking about collaboration wasn't it, for, for Messenger. What about collaboration between apps? Let's say you want to actually build multiple experiences within your one single messenger experience, what do you do? In platform 2.1 release, our latest release year, we shipped something called handover protocol. The handover protocol is a simple way for people to actually collaborate to the multiple apps within a single messenger experience. The most common use case is, uh, let's say you want to actually automatically, seamlessly, switch between an automation and a live chat person, okay? so. Just imagine, let's say you're building a fashion bot. So your basic step is, I have automation that lets people browse around some fashion tips. But at the same time, you want to build a unique experience around a concierge experience. So you want to allow maybe VIPs or any users to actually talk to a live person about what I wear for a tech conference. So in that case here, the handover protocol allows you to actually switch between these two apps seamlessly. How this works is that the handover protocol requires you to first set one of the app to be the primary receiver, and one or more apps, another one or more apps, to be your secondary receiver. What I mean is that the primary receiver first will get the default messages when they begins, when user begins to actually go and triggers the spot. So the primary receiver is the one that actually have the threat control right now. Let's say that now the user actually clicks on one of your buttons to say, I want to talk to your live person. What that means is that your, live re your primary receiver will call an API to hand over the threat control to the secondary receiver. That way, if your secondary app is, let's say, a live chat agent, they would now know that I can actually, as a human being, respond uh, to the customer message. Even though that the most common use cases is collaboration between two different apps, this is actually built in a very generic way. So you can actually use handover protocol to synchronize between multiple apps collaboration as well. And for example, one of the use cases I've seen is that if you want to have two different live chat providers, one for customer care and other for uh, lead generation, you can now actually use handover protocol to figure out how to actually hand over all these different controls. Additionally, we, off, we have also integrated uh, the page inbox UI into our chat, uh, handover protocol. So you can now also get live chat by using our page um, inbox as well. How that works is that you set one of your secondary prime, uh, receiver to be the page inbox. So what does that really mean? A user sends a message to the primary receiver, your automated uh, bot, and at the same time, if you already have so set this up properly, these messages will be sent to the page inbox in a done folder, okay? And when the primary receiver gets a signal from the user that they want to talk to a live person, it will actually go and pass the threat control to the secondary receiver, 
And at that point, the patient box is going to move all these messages from the done folder to your regular patient box. So that means that as a page admin, now you can actually respond to your customer's questions in real time when they actually press on a button to say, I want to talk to your live person. So talking about live person, let's talk about conversation understanding. Um, in the platform 2.1 release, we've also released a new feature called built-in NLP. This is a simple way to incorporate natural language processing into your bot. What this really means is that a built-in NLP can now automatically understand some of the meanings and information about the text that the user is sending you when they are, where, when they are actually sending the messages to your bot. In our first version here, uh, we detected a few intents that we've seen are very, fairly common that developers actually need to understand. So that includes greetings like hi, hello, bye, thanks, date and time, um, how much money, and then phone number and email addresses. This is our first step, and we're currently still iterating on it, to actually go and give the NLP capabilities to all developers. By just switching a toggle on the, the, the flip on, this is what you'll actually get. So in the receive URL here, you automatically will get a JSON structure for intents that we understand uh, so far. So in this case here, we can actually detect something like a time, and it will tell you how confident are we that me the message is actually including the time, and also the structure information in that, uh, in that uh, uh, message as well. So I hope that we will try that out and let us know how this works for you. One of the most common questions I guess a lot is, OK, I got a really good bot, and I have really good user experience, but how do I drive traffic to my bots here? There's actually many different tactics that people have used so far, and uh, I've seen actually a combination of using all these. So let me go over pretty quickly around uh, the different ways for people to actually discover the bots and an example on it. The most important thing is to actually think about how you can actually drive traffic to your, um, the places where people already have a lot, a lot of eyeballs. So in this case here, TechCrunch, where does it get the most eyeball? Pretty much this website, right? So TechCrunch, at the top of its page, is using the Send to Messenger plugin in order to get people to subscribe on the Messenger bot. If you have a store, and since FA, we've actually introduced a um, parametric QR code. This uh, actually leads, different, uh, leads people to different experiences in your bot um, by actually having a parametric code inside a, inside a QR code here. So one of the great example I will share is the Madonna Brazil. What Madonna Brazil did was they actually have a QR code for each of its tray liners. And when you actually scan that using the messenger camera, you actually get a series of games that you play, and then you can win coupons over it. Uh, during just seven days of trying this out, Madonna's was able to see 175,000 people participated with 30,000 coupons generated. Not too shabby, right? One of the most common things that we also got a lot of developers to ask about was a discovery service on Messenger. So in F8, uh, in April, in our developer conference, we talk about introducing uh, a discovery tab. And since then, during the summer, we've rolled it out to 100% in US. And we're working very quickly to actually iterate and try, we'll try to actually launch it to more countries soon. Let me show how this works. So the discovery tab uh, have multiple units that were ranked. And so far, what we have is bots that you have used before, so recently used, feature bots, as well as bots with different categories. We are always iterating on this uh, service here to make sure that we give people the best experience and to expose the bots that are most interesting to them. I talk about sharing a lot, right? So another feature that you can actually do is customizing the sharing uh, message. So in this case here, uh, this is a trivia blast, a game bot. So you can actually do a lot of trivia games. And I love Harry Potter, so this is the example that I got here. 
So after playing the games, you can go and share a score to your friends. And tr what trivia that Blast here does is it customizes the message to say, can you beat me in Harry Potter? So obviously, my friend would click on it. Clicking on that link will basically deep link it back to your bot. And that's how you actually get other people to discover the experience that you actually want people to find. And if you want to actually even drive more traffic, there's always ways to um, do paid discovery. So since last year, Messenger actually have um, ads that can now lead your exit from the ads experience to the bot through newsfeed, Instagram, and recently we've also released it in Messenger ads. We also can actually do uh, sponsored messages. So say you actually have a bot, and uh, you've actually talked to a lot of people, and they've interacted with you, with you before. One good way to re-engage and retarget people afterwards is to use the sponsored messages to re-engage the people who have sent you messages. And this is a great way to actually go and retarget people after the 24 hours uh, policy. And just last week, we have um, announced something called a message uh, objective. So in the ads interface now, we have a new objective that helps you to optimize for audience that will likely be replying back to you. So with the click to messenger ads now, it's actually more optimized than ever to make sure that to allow you to actually create new conversation. So give it a try and let us know how it works. This is going to be rolled out soon in a couple of months. And so you'll be actually seeing this over time in your, the, your ads interface. So last year, it was a year for us to learn and explore and understand how people actually use uh, um, all the different functionalities in platform. This year, it has been a year of scale for us. We will continue to build great experiences on the, pl the platform. We want to actually expose the most powerful and unique experiences on, mess on, on Messenger to our users. And we want to continue to actually invest in social in interaction because that's really the power of Messenger right now. And of, but of course, we'll also improve, keep improving our uh, fundamentals in the platform side. So keep all the bug reports and everything uh, coming. So thank you. I hope that some of these features are useful for you to actually build up the bots that you're actually dreaming of. And uh, keep sending us your feedback so that we'll know what kind of things that you're really looking for. Thanks. Good questions? Thanks so much, Helen. Yeah. So, so have, has everyone been cooking on the inside saying, oh, oh I want to ask a question. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Oh, right there, yellow t-shirt. Um, one second. Run. No, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for your insights. I, I think you know that in, in Austria and Germany, especially, we're uh, mostly using WhatsApp. Do you have any news? Will there be ever bots on WhatsApp? I'm not very familiar with the WhatsApp uh, uh, roadmap. In fact, uh, Messenger and WhatsApp actually operate separately in, in Facebook. So I actually am not really sure around the timeline and be able to tell you about the direction on it. OK. Sorry. Other questions? Maybe something specific to one of the new features, whether it's usable for what you're, yes, right over here. Hi, um, Hi. I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the Messenger objective in the ad platform and what it does differently than the other objectives that were available for um, sending users to a bot conversation. Sure. Um, so objectives are basically what you're trying to do. And so ads is really optimized for the results of that. Some of the objectives in ads are like impression. I want people to be able to see my ads. Some of them are actually conversions, like using pixels to understand what kind of transaction and so forth. So for messenger objective, it, messages obje objective, that's basically an objective that we are trying to uh, show the ads to people who will likely be actually replying 
to uh, your, your bots. So this is a great way to actually uh, open up new conversations. So if you actually have a bot that uh, you want people to be able to try out, right? Um, this is uh, an ask that we actually you uh, optimize for like, hey, these are the group of people who will likely be actually replying to your ads by when, you, when they click on it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes, in the green shirt over here. Hello. Hi. Uh, um, beside the one, uh, the bot to customer conversation and the extensions, uh, do you know are there, are there any plans to make a, a bot to many conversations? So like bot in a group. So uh, in a group chat, there's the bot, and, and the group can say, "Hey, uh, bot, can you do this and that for us?" So are there any plans on that, or still staying with the extensions? So you mean to actually understand what people are saying and be able to participate inside a group yeah, conversation? Yeah, yes. Correct. We've been exploring about it, but I can't really talk about like specific directions on that so far. Um, one of the things that we do definitely want to do is actually learn around how people are actually interacting with chat extensions. Um, I didn't talk about M as well in uh, Messenger, but this is also something that we are really learning about how people are, like by understanding what their intent is, um, figure out what kind of things that they, are wa they want to do and what kind of things are they actually expecting to do. Um, so it's still a learning phase for us, so um, stay tuned and we'll actually talk a little bit more about it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Fantastic, yes. <laughs> Over here, a FinTecher. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, I just had a question on the QR code that you provide on Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. and are you planning to um, update uh, and making it accessible, more accessible to users? And uh, is it something that you're going to push on the business side as well? So being able to interact with the bot through this uh, QR code, so connecting offline and online. We've been working with partners on that for sure. Um, are you there a specific thing that you, when you say actually expose? Oh, go on. You have to shout now. <laughs> um, I'm really interested in knowing are there specific things that you're actually looking for in terms of exposing QR code? Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm, I'm currently working on a, a chatbot for a financial so for an insurance company. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to connect offline and online. So having on a display ads or on an on a airport, for example, this QR code that generates, that opens a chatbot dedicated to ensure uh, luggage, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the idea, connecting offline and online on a specific um, geolocalization or um, stuff like that, yeah. So we do support basically printing out the QR code for people to scan using the messenger camera. If you have other uh, suggestions in terms of how people can actually go and see these QR codes, maybe we can actually talk offline and, and see what we can do about that. Cool. Amazing. Cool? Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. That's what I call solution-oriented right there. Anyone else? <laughs> yes, please. Sorry. Hi. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, is there, uh, um, yeah, like, a, what's the best approach to um, develop a chatbot for, for, for your messenger? What's the best? That's a pretty generic question. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Sorry. That's, <laughs> let me think a little bit about, um, so the way I would actually approach it is first actually thinking about what value you're trying to provide for your user. What exactly is a problem or convenience that you're trying to solve for us? Right? Um, because a lot of times that flow and the design actually really depends on what you're trying to do and who are your audience. Um, because some of the more, um, you know, like audience are more tech savvy, so like your more sophisticated UI actually makes sense. But some of them are more like, hey, for everybody, so they might actually not know a lot of the uh, UI, you know, like uh, structures and so forth. So you want to actually keep things fairly simple. Um, I know it's a pretty generic question, uh, answer. So like um, my, my uh, approach would be actually really understand what people are trying to do first. And it's a lot of testing and iterating. So like what I would usually do is test the flow, try, try it out, see what people actually get them to use it, and then see what kind of things actually breaks for them or what they don't really understand. And, and see if they really get the value that you're trying to provide. And if not, iterate on it. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, right behind you in the white shirt. 
Hello. Hi. I just wanted to know what's your stand on messenger marketing. So using messenger applications in order to drive sales and to get leads, for example. You think in the future there will be more restrictions or what are your what is your stand about this topic? What is my stand about this topic? Well, we're definitely encouraging it. <laughs> so uh, for example, I've already seen tons of businesses actually using ads to do lead generation. Um, and some of them are actually doing pretty well. Um, if you just imagine, a lot, like I've actually seen some of the ads where when they click on it, it's still using a very old web page that lets you actually like, type on like 12 different views. Um, and Chatbot actually works a lot better um, in, in the sense that people really understand what it is and they also know that it's asynchronous. So after they did the whole thing. They know how, what kind of things that they really expect. So, so far I've actually seen experiments working on lead generation to be um, helping on conversions. Um, I can't diverge <laughs> exact number for some of the partners that we've been working with, um, but I actually see it to be pretty promising. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, very quick question, last one. Well, that is you, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> So hi, I was hi. wondering if we can get some insight on the evolution of the Facebook Messenger UI on the conversation, because as you said, uh, we have web views that are a really cool way to add to the conversation, mm -hmm. but I was wondering if there's plans for like, I don't know, a checkbox template or a combo box or anything on the UI version. Um. So it's still a learning phase for us um, because what, what we've seen is that you know we started from conversations and slowly we realized that you know there is limitations in terms of just doing conversations, and after that we started looking at okay what kind of what kind of UI elements is actually useful for common use cases. Um, the reason why we actually do the web view is because we first want to actually let people build very customized uh, experiences on it, and I've seen actually fairly good. Um, you know, user experience because some people don't like they even replace like drop uh, uh, like the drop down fields for so that they can actually go and scan stuff and that seems to be very natural for people. Um, we we are actually looking at how people are actually using the web view and that gives us a lot of feedback around okay if there are actually generic common things that we really want to build like natively into into our platform. So feedback is really welcome here uh, in terms of like what kind of things you are trying to do. Um, if there are things that the web view doesn't actually work for you, also let me know so that um, we can actually go and think about how to actually build that in our platform. Yes. Fantastic. Well, it's a great note to end on, Helen. Very helpful to Thanks. all the developers out there. She's, she'll be around if you have other questions that you yes. think of later. Thanks so much, Helen. Thank you. Big applause for Helen, please. Later.